The State Department warning all travelers to reconsider visiting all of China over the coronavirus. For the sick, uh, sickness spooking investors in the market globally, slamming stocks, hitting oil really big. Uh, we're off the lows of the session uh, from earlier today, and, but we're heading back down right now. Now we're off more than 400 points. I want to bring in added uh, venture special advisor and managing director Michael Block, along with Bonson Group CIO David Bonson. David, let me start with you. Uh, we were off as much as 550 points at one point. Uh, we're still under extreme pressure right now. What do you make of, of the impact and, and the potential impact and how the markets are reacting? Well, I always hate being in the consensus. You know, we always kind of have a certain contrarian bend to a lot of the perspectives we want to to give our clients and even give your, your viewers, Charles. But honestly, the consensus view that this is a transitory event that is going to be resolved and not worthy of investors panicking is, in fact, our view. And if we felt differently, we would act differently. But I think you have to keep in mind the Dow has moved up three thousand points in the last three and a half months. So to get a four or five hundred point swing out of something like this is entirely understandable. Michael, in the meantime, no, the markets are down today. Uh, they, they had their roughest week uh, in a long time last week. So there is a message to the market, even if it's a, no, it's a near term message. What do you think that is? My big takeaway here is that growth is still where it's at. We had some great earnings last week from the likes of Intel, even Netflix, IBM. And, you know, we still say that growth over value is where to go here. Um, at Adit, we focus on the private markets. And the big takeaway is be selective about growth. Find the right companies. When I think about China, everyone's worried about the coronavirus. And I do think this is going to impact ec global economic growth. But when I think about China, I think about, I want, to, I want to talk about other things. Governance, visibility of earnings. These are the factors we think about at Adit. And so that's what we're still thinking about. And that applies to private do markets and public markets. you think the transparency to the degree that we've seen it, the, the swifter action, this is not like the SARS situation where they tried to cover it up. Does that can it ap apply also maybe to a more transparent markets, a, a more transparent uh, economic relationship? I've traveled to a I traveled to Asia recently, and I have a lot of conversations there. Again, there's this thought about making governance better, about getting access to world markets. People and corporations in China they want to do business with the world. They don't want to close off. They want to be more transparent and open. They're excited about the prospect of doing that. I know a lot of times we get differing messages on that, but that's the message I got from firsthand. David Bonson, um, the, in the meantime, uh, you know, uh, there is this urge to go in there to buy this dip. Uh, again, the consensus uh, for almost all the professionals that I know is that, yeah, there'll be some sort of hiccup, but not enough to change your investing philosophy. Earnings season is here. What should we be bracing for? Well, first of all, I definitely believe that if I'm going to criticize panic selling, I have to equally cr uh, criticize panic buying. So a three or 400 point dip after a 3,000 point rally is not exactly a screaming sale. I, I agree with what he said that last week, some of those earnings results out of IBM and Intel, they show you where a lot of strength is. I wouldn't agree that that is actually in the traditional growth parts of the market. I'd consider IBM a classic value story right now. But either way, I think throughout earnings season, which is really going to drive what markets do in the weeks and months ahead, um, you want to look for opportunities to nibble at those companies that have not participated the same way that a lot of the rest of the market has. IBM was a great example. On the China front, though, you have global coordination, much better transparency, more alignment of interest, other trading partners there to help. They're going to get this resolved. Real quick, Michael, uh, the Fed and interest rates. Uh, are you okay with the idea that the Fed is a backstop here, that the Fed will be our friend in 2020? Something interesting happened in the last few months and even the last few weeks with the Fed. The balance sheet uh, got a little, got a little, uh, didn't grow as quickly as right. it had since uh, September. And what happened there was we noticed the market stagnated. Let's see All if right. we get a message on Wednesday about it continuing to grow. Well, the message right now is there's some anxiety in the markets, gentlemen, as I hand it over to Liz Clayman.